present For the Record with Neil Heinen. What we need right now in this world, in these times, is poetry. To that end, a conversation with Madison's new poet laureate is next on For the Record. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Heinen. Percy Bysshe Shelley once wrote that poetry awakens and enlarges the mind itself by rendering it the receptacle of a thousand unapprehended combinations of thought. Poetry lifts the veil from the hidden beauty of the world. It seems to me we need to lift that veil again at this point in our history. The poet Martin Espada recently wrote a reflection on current politics by quoting Walt Whitman, speaking of the need for bards in the future to dauntlessly confront greed, injustice, and all forms of that wiliness and tyranny whose roots never die. Poetry is enjoying a resurgence in our country, and Madison's most recent poet laureate was part of that resurgence. Madison has a new poet laureate, Angela Trudell Vasquez, and she is my guest this morning as is her predecessor, Oscar Morales. Welcome, both of you, very much. Thank you. I'm glad Thank you're you. here. Thank you. So, so first, let's just start by talking about the, the role of, of, a po of a poet laureate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I consider it a, a very, it's a formal mm -hmm. position. Certainly, the United States has a long history of esteemed poet laureates. How do you define a, a poet laureate? Angela? I think a poet laureate is an ambassador for poetry to the community, making poetry real and accessible to everyone in the community. Um, there's all different types of poetry, right? But I am also on the Wisconsin Poet Laureate Commission, so I help select the poet laureate for the state of Wisconsin, and that's Margaret Rosga. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for someone who could go into the urban areas and go into the rural areas and speak poetry to the people and make it part of the fabric of their lives. Each poet laureate has their own kind of approach to that, right? Yes. I mean, it's a very individual, unique thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I've been teaching poetry. I can teach ages from 4 to 80 for a very long time. I've developed various poetry workshops, and, and I can see the effects of it. And when I go into a poetry workshop and I work with teens, they're hungry for it. They're hungry for the arts. It, re it relates to their lives. I bring in poetry that speaks to the situation of the time. Uh, whether it's political or cultural, um, I kind of think that poetry is a way that we can create empathy and understanding and healing across cultures. Yeah. So I see it as bread and water. I see it as part of our lives. And language is so much fun. You can play with language. Uh, it's very nimble. There was a mentor I had who said poetry was our first technology. Now, you, whether you agree with that or not, mm -hmm. it's definitely a tool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not scary. You know, <laughs> it, it's fun. Uh -huh. Yeah. How was your experience, Oscar, as, as Poet Laureate? Probably the fun part is following the different Poet Laureates that we had. Yeah. We had John Tushin, who was the really first, a right? poet, poet of the people, yeah. and did a lot of things. Uh, Andrea Musher helped set up an endowment for the Poet Laureate. Babu started the Bus Lions Poetry. Yeah. And then Wendy uh, Vardaman and Sarah Bussey started the City Council readings, bringing the poetry to our City Council, helping them understand it. But my experience has been been amazing, and uh, I'm happy to see Angela. We worked together on a couple projects over the years, and I, and I think she's the perfect choice for this role. You've been in, in, in Madison many years. Oscar, you've been here five years living, but you're familiar with oh, Madison. Yeah. So how does, what's the Madison poetry scene like? What's the, the appetite for poetry here? Well, I can speak that I've been coming here and doing poetry readings at the Chazen and other things and coffee shops since 2005, 2006, and it's alive and well. Uh -huh. um, and I feel like, you know, when I go into a poetry reading, I'm going to see people I know, and then I'm going to see people that I've never met before. But, you know, open mics are a good time, and you can explore a lot just by going in there and catching the flavor of it. Madison has a ton of poets, and a lot of those poets travel all across the city. There's like poetry train between Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago, Racine. Yeah. You know, there are 150 poets that this week will be at a poetry marathon at Woodland Pattern Book Center in Milwaukee, and many of them will be from Madison. Right. Yeah, so we're, we're going to converge. I, so I, I think there's, I, I think it's somewhat important to distinguish poetry from other forms of spoken word. Yeah. I mean, there's, oh, yeah. there, I mean, and, and it's all wonderful art and, mm -hmm. and, and, and really important. And we've got storytelling scenes mm -hmm. in Madison, and we've got slams and, you know, a, a, a more of a, a hip-hop spoken word stuff. Uh, and, and I, I mean, poets have to find their 
place, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. in that in that lineup. Yeah, there's poetry for the page and poetry for the stage. I like to think I kind of blend those a little bit um, because sound and image and there's a certain magic to poetry when I think of it. Like I'm weaving sound and images and spiraling things. Uh, there's a science behind it yeah. and I, I can teach that. I learned that from the Institute of American Indian Arts and I feel like I approach it as organic when I'm teaching but there's a whole bunch of things that I could bring to the table if allowed and I hope to. Yeah. You know, like poetry is a visual art form, you know, and the buses that we're going to do, the bus line poetry thing speaks to that as well. So there's so much I could say about it and we probably won't have time. <laughs> so I encourage people to come to my lectures and the craft talks and the free poetry workshops that I'll offer to the community and, you know, I'll blow their mind with all the things that poetry can be. I, I, I just, it, it feels so relevant to me and I'm, yeah. I'm reminded of a story in the New York Times a couple of years ago and it was right after the election. Mm -hmm. It was a response to the election, mm -hmm. uh, but it was a story. Story that 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 suggested that there there was a renewed interest in poetry, and that in in big cities, New York City in particular, poets were out performing yes. more, and the audiences yes. were bigger than they had ever been. Yeah, I think people are hungry for poetry. Yeah. I've been to events that um, that you had for. I didn't know there were Latinos in Wisconsin, and I think there's like 150 people there. You know, there is something that speaks to people. It's an oral form. It's one of our earliest forms of art, probably. Yeah. And here we are. We're still doing it, and we're still making it new. You know, and we're still inspiring poets. I know you've published a lot of folks, and, and here we are, creating the poets for the next generation. It's not just politics either obviously Oscar I mean your book uh, you know spoke to the the challenges that we face as a as a, as a world right now uh, and how poetry in so many different ways can offer a little window into those challenges well, I think the power of a of a poet is to be able to write about anything mm -hmm. And whether it's the daily event or something either cultural or political, and I think the, the astute poet can, can find both the images and, and the power behind the voice to kind of inspire somebody and make, make a difference. I spoke at the Madison Nonprofit Day, and I weaved in poetry with 10 lessons and being a nonprofit leader. Yep. And sometimes the luncheon speaker, you, you, you just got the meal and <laughs> you haven't seen your friends, so you want to talk, but you, you could hear a pin drop. People yeah. really kind of resonated. Sometimes I think poetry kind of, sometimes people kind of got a little death grip on their mind and their heart and poetry can open that up a little bit. And I think it, it allows their mind to, to receive more, you have to receive poetry. Well, I would, I would like you to share some examples of your work, and we're going to do that when we come back with our two poet laureates right after this. For the record, sponsored by MG&E, your community energy company. Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful, it leaves you in awe. So inspiring, it changes your life. So beautiful, you wish it would never end. When that happens, it's something not to be missed. Shen Yun. Returning to Overture Center for the Arts, February 4th and 5th. Tickets at shenyun.com slash WI. Winter in Wisconsin? It's the time for going all the way up and throwing down. Is it time for discovering something cool? And gather somewhere warm. Whether you want to spend winter inside, outside a boat, there's something for everyone in Wisconsin. a safe place to come home to. Nothing in your world seems right. This is a place that I call my Help turn things around for a child. Become a foster parent. 
Start the new year with great deals from Jeep and Don Miller. It's the Start Something New sales event on now. Get the 2020 Jeep Compass Latitude 4x4. Lease for only $299 per month, 42 months, 10,000 miles a year. $2,500 plus taxes and fees due with signing. The 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited with heated leather seats. There's great selection. Over $4,000 off MSRP after all discounts and rebates and your own Don Miller deal. Don Miller, Madison and Dane County. Jeep headquarters. Odana Road, Madison. Angela Trudell Vasquez was recently named Madison's Poet Laureate, the sixth or seventh Poet Laureate, I guess. Oscar Morales was her predecessor, and uh, they join me today. Um, so your first book of poetry was published this year, was it? Well, it's actually my third collection. I'm sorry. No, that's yep. okay. Um, and I brought it here with me, In Light, Always Light. And, uh, I and was it came thrilled. out in 2019, right? May 2019. Yeah. I yeah. was the seventh finalist for the new Women's Voices series from Finishing Line Press. It's half my thesis. Um, so I'm really happy that it's out now. And this is actually a cover of High Stamp Park, which is known as Radar Hill on Milwaukee Street on the east side where all the folks sled uh -huh. in the winter. And I edited many of the poems in here and walked in the woods, which is part of my process. So I've got many poems for the city, uh, the residents, the children that uh, were in my neighborhood. So what did you choose to read for us? Um, I'm going to read a short one, if that's okay. Yeah, please. And I have other much longer ones, yep. but uh, I thought, well, you know, this is for the children of Madison, and we'll see if it goes on the sidewalk or not, but it's called Wheel Kids. Chocolate children race down the cul-de-sac, tight curls bounce, jeans, t-shirts rise with air, clenched fists, tape bars, tennis shoe breaks, no breaks, a shout, they cruise out of sight of the window, bikes, scooters shake, quake, skinny kid arms, legs, torsos, skin flattens, neighbors, straight arrows, shooting stars, flesh flies, bodies grow wings. I think we all rode bikes as a children. I mean, what? I, what yeah. how, how do kids respond to that? It must be fascinating to oh, see Oh, children, when, when you have affection for children and you're reading poetry that's about them and for them, they love it. And uh, when I do poetry workshops, uh, sometimes we'll do identity poems, right? Kind of flesh that out a little. And they respond, you know? They come up with their own things. Often I'll do 10-minute writing and then we'll share those pieces, whatever comes out of those. I mean, as a 68-year-old guy, I could almost feel... Yeah. And I can see kids, yeah. you know, as, yeah. as they're hearing this. Just yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Having I mean, a, like physical, a physical response to right. it. Right. And I mean, this has probably been edited 40 times, so it took a long <laughs> time to get like that. Right. But if it feels good, you know, you kind of know. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. I mean, just talk a little bit about the process. Oh, okay. So... There's the organic process, right? The inspiration, which is easy. And I free float whatever comes on the page and I harvest that later. Then it's the editing to me that's the real process now. I'll put them on my wall, I'll walk around them, I'll figure out the inner architecture, I'll look at sound, what words I'm using, what color and images I'm bringing. So it's great, I mean, that's really fun. I think I spent four hours on one poem this over the weekend, mm -hmm. you know? But it's a labor of love and I get lost in it. So the, the book that I did, this book was all on my walls and I stared at it for a long time, yeah. but I'm really happy with it. You know, there, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into poetry, but if it feels easy, that's what it should. It should feel accessible. It should feel like a drink of water. Similar? Different? Yeah, no, I think uh, clearly I, I feel like I, I hear something and I feel if, I, if I'm patient enough, I, it'll come to me and then I just try to get it down as quickly as I can, and then I come back, like Angela mentioned, and kind of craft it. Uh -huh. Sometimes it comes out whole, sometimes you get half of it, and then you, you have to kind of work it. And sometimes it, it's a poem that's not meant to be, and I have to be happy that uh, <laughs> I experienced it, but maybe... But I do keep it, and you never know down the road. Mm -hmm. I was always seduced by Ginsburg's first thought, best thought. You yes. know, it just it it, it, yes. it. But that is not the best way for all poets. No, but that's exactly what I do, yeah. and that's what I teach. Just do first thought, best thought. Let's yeah. not let's not overthink it. Let's get it out on the page. What are you feeling? And I find with students and even myself, the pen is faster than you. There's things that the pen's revealing, and if you can tap into that subconsciousness, that that unconscious brain, you would be surprised what comes out, and I mean, that's I, exciting. I mean, I, I think it's fascinating because I, I, I think poetry is very difficult. I mean, it, 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 good mm. poetry, you, you can tell the yeah. effort that went into it. And yet, 
so many people feel like they have a poem in them, and, and you want yeah. to encourage that, right? Well, I think of poetry as a visual art form, but poetry as a painting, too. Like, you can go to a painting that you can stand and you get something different from it, but how many times do you reread a novel, right? But poems, we recycle and we bring them out for important events, you know? And it means something differently when you look at it at different times in your life, too. That's, that's how I yeah. feel, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got have you got a poem on, uh, in your head right now that you could share with um, us? Usually, uh, I'm a little too old, so I don't keep it in my head. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's easier to, to to write it down. And uh, this was actually a poem that um, was inspired by my uh, sister. Uh -huh. She would tease my mom because my mom worked in a hospital, and she said, "You know, you're like a social worker." Right. So uh, this poem is titled. My mother is a social worker who works in a hospital. My mother is a social worker who works in a hospital. She makes daily visits, checks her charts, shares small talk with the patients as she brightens up their rooms. My mother is a social worker who works in the hospital. She is always the first one at the scene, just like the television doctors. Whether in the birthing room at my niece Amanda's arrival, on the operating table, medicine's trap door. My mother is a social worker who works in a hospital. My mother translates for the Spanish patients, especially after surgery. She touches their fear with words that can heal. My mother is a social worker who works in a hospital. Surprisingly, there is little blood on her pink uniform, just a day's sweat and dirt. You wouldn't know she was a cleaning lady if you looked in her eyes. My mother is a social worker who works in a hospital. <clears throat> I've heard that poem a number of times and have read it many times. Mm -hmm. what, what, what do you hear in that poem? Well, there's a theory of poetry that I'm going to say. It's from Arthur Z. Every line is a poem. Mm -hmm. And when I hear Oscar read that, when I look at the page and I see how it's constructed, yeah. to me, I see every line is a poem in that piece. Uh -huh. That's what I. That's what I see. And I haven't I've only heard you read it. I haven't sat by you to see it on the page. So that's that's a, th a theory, and I've employed that as well. But it's one of the fun things to do. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I think what I heard you say, I mean, the, the yes. fun things to do is you're, you're looking at the line on the page, the, mm -hmm. the, the way it, it, the design, the yeah. style of it, but hearing it right at the same time. Right. And doing both of those together. Right. Right. I mean, we could go on and on, but I see every line is a poem in that piece. Yeah. And Arthur Z is a Chinese-American poet uh, who won a, a big award recently, mm -hmm. so he's someone people should bring into their repertoire. We're going to talk more about poetry in our life and our world when we come back on For the Record right after this. Happy New Year! It's 2020. Make a plan, an unlimited plan. At U.S. Cellular, our unlimited plans start at just $30. $30 for all you can post, stream, and share on our super strong, super fast network. You can even call your mom. Hey mom, what's up? So why wait? Stop paying more with the other guys and start saving with U.S. Cellular. Just $30 a month. It's the unlimited plan of your future. U.S. Cellular. Choose fair. In the Army National Guard, family means everything. Our parents, they were really supportive that all five of us would join. I got my education because of the Guard. I got to travel a little bit and experience a whole different culture. It helped me get my job, it helped me pay for my house. Being part-time really helped because I could have some opportunities that were still in education. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard instills pride that you and your family will share. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about part-time service. I'm a little old to count down the days, but my ski trip to Cascade Mountain with my cousin each year, so much fun. We used to pretend like we were flying. Now, we really do. My dad and my uncle like that we still ski free. But Noah and I, we just have fun. See you there. Congratulations to Katie Aspinwall, a top-notch fifth grade teacher at Our Lady Queen of Peace School in Madison. 
I care deeply about each and every one of them. Most often, it's the students that are the most challenging that are the ones that I love the most, even though it might not seem like that to them. If you know a teacher who deserves to be recognized as a top-notch teacher, send us a letter, an email, or nominate a teacher at channel3000.com. Sponsored by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. I am back with Madison Poet Laureate Angela Trudell Vasquez, an old friend of the show and former Poet Laureate Oscar Morales. Um, and if you would, Angela, read another piece sure. for us. Uh, this is called Wood Stoves and Outhouses. Grandchildren fly on the rope swing out back. She waits, stirs the beans, keeps the fire going. What lies beneath her hands? Wood smoke slips from a black belly stove. Red cinders fume from the night before. Heat vibrates toward three boys in bed. One raises his tousled head, sees his mom poke the embers with an iron rod as tall as she is long. What grows from her exhale? Clean socks, shoes, pants, three sets hang on wood pads. Quesadillas line metal lunch pails. Square shoulders trod to school. Boys with no father but a mother. Old oak and high winds with roots deep in green. What apple bouquet greets her nose? Open the world to bumblebee tongue. Breath of pollen breathe. What flavor rose? Her sons go, come back, go, come back. Greets them with her mulberry trees. Vermilion roses, thinning hair, flowered house dresses, aprons. That's for my grandmother. What are your plans as Poet Laureate? Uh, we have the Bus Lines Poetry Call coming up. I'll have that out in about another week, and I'll be curating that. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. There's an, an event on February 6th. And this opens to anybody yes, to, to yeah, submit yeah. their poems? Absolutely. Yeah, and I think poems on buses are unique because you, you're there and you get to interact with it. And I read a uh, The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams for a very long time on the bus. Never wow. got tired of it. Yeah. And that just shows you how short of a poem and what it can do, right? Yeah. You can always find something new. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> how are you going to keep connected with, with, with the Madison poetry world, Oscar? Well, I think Friday Angela has plans in April as part of National Poetry Month to bring the mm -hmm. Poet Laureates together oh, yeah. along with either the Milwaukee or the Wisconsin Poet Laureate. Oh, and, great. And um, we're actually uh, finishing up a book that will cover the 50 years of poetry, oh. having a Poet Laureate in Madison. So Angela's going to be uh, our final chapter to oh. cover the 50 years. Mm, so nice. We hired Pat Dillon to uh -huh. help help us, and each of the poets submitted. So I'll, I'll stay involved. Yes. I'm still here in Madison. We, we, we need more time. But, but the, the, the universality of poetry, mm -hmm. I think, is, is such an integral part of its beauty and the fact that Joy Harjo is poet yes. lord of the United States yes. now, right? Oh, I mean, yes. And we just have all of these different mm -hmm. entry points mm -hmm. into, uh, yeah. into into, in, into the, the the cultural significance of poetry. Mm -hmm. I have had the honor to be in the audience with Joy Harjo and learn from her at IAIA, the Institute of American Indian Arts, and and she's such a gift to the country. And it's exciting. It's exciting right now. Poetry is uh, on fire. So I'm looking forward to 2020. Yeah. And what we're going to put on the buses and what the community will bring uh, to the scene as well. And, and it, it just in terms of a, of a welcoming entry point, I think, into, into exploration for young people, that where they might struggle right. finding that entry point in, in math or science mm -hmm. or uh, poetry, like music. Can yes. be that place where they feel. Yeah, and there's poetry welcome. and math, and math and poetry. You know, we're going to count uh, some syllables. Sure. I mean, that's where I start with young people. Your name. How many names does your beat have? Every word is music. So there's there's some good stuff coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, was it a two-year term? Two year, but maybe four years. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You were four. That's yeah, right. Yeah, two years, yeah. and you have that's opportunity right. to re-up, which I which I did. So. And and, and, and I mean. I mean, that, that this gives you give you some time mm -hmm. to address this idea that, mm -hmm. that that right now we are at a point in the evolution of our world mm -hmm. where again maybe poetry is just critical. Right, and to and our 
moving forward. Youth Poet Laureateship is something I'd like to bring to the city of Madison. Uh -huh. I'd like that to be my legacy, and Oscar, we've talked about it too, and I think now is the time. We need to bring young people in. We need their voices as much as everyone else's voices, so I'm hoping to establish that. We'll do a slow, deliberate process, but um, you know, hopefully in another year we will have a Madison Youth Poet Laureate that I'll be able to mentor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, you get, do you get into the schools much? I do, and yeah. I'll be reaching out. Um, I've taught in various schools throughout the state of Wisconsin, but I will be uh, calling out to friends in the community and English teachers and uh, seeing what I can do to engage their students. Like, like much of poetry, I, I, I mean, I think that the faculty at the UW is vastly mm -hmm. underappreciated, mm -hmm. right, for the quality sure. of the poets that, right. that we've got in this city. Right. Well, Rita May Reese from, our, you know, with Arts Literature and Laboratory, she comes from that program, and I look forward to doing a little more blending. I have been fortunate to read with a few of the faculty, and so I think, you know, we need to, we need to do some cross-cultural sharing. Yeah. And we do have spaces now. We do. Where Poetry is happening. Maybe mm -hmm. more spaces than we had in the past, and they're 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 multi-use. I mean, they're for music and other things. But there's the libraries, right? And I've That's been a right. great lover of libraries my oh, whole life. Yeah. And you can get free spaces. So I hope to have poetry workshops in all the libraries in you know Dane County that are open to the public. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, congratulations. Thank you. Let's do this again. Yes. Oscar, thanks for coming back, and we're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this.